Let me talk to you a little bit about deficit reduction because that's something that's certainly going to loom very large for you in the next couple of years. You're going to get a spending bill with 5,000 earmarks in it worth $4 billion, discretionary spending up 12% when inflation is essentially zero. How can you sign such a bill and be serious about deficit reduction? Well, look, the, uh, keep in mind that some of the things that are in there are funding for unemployment insurance, veterans affairs, things that we are still part of the emergency situation that we are in. Uh, the costs, everybody would acknowledge that the costs of this recession and just providing help to states and families and so forth has added to the deficit. But people need to understand where our real debt and deficit comes from. It's not, it's not the trillion dollars of Recovery Act spending and uh, you know, the carryover of TARP uh, that we inherited when we came in. Uh, it's actually the fact that we have a structural deficit. We take in 18% uh, of gross domestic product in taxes and we spend 23%. So here's what we're going to have to do. Uh, I've been very clear and this will be reflected in my budget and my State of the Union address next year, that trying to either raise taxes or cut spending next year would be the wrong thing to do for an economy that's still coming out of a recession and is still very fragile. What we have to do is identify ways that mid-term and long-term we are pulling the deficit down and reducing our debt. That has to be a priority. And what are the things that are required to do that? The main priorities are going to have to be dealing with Medicare and Medicaid, our health care costs, and that's why health care is so important. Uh, I think that we can reduce uh, non-defense discretionary spending in a significant way. Uh, we've got to wind down this war in Iraq uh, on a timely basis. I mean, there are going to be a host of tough decisions that we're going to have to make over the next year, and I'm prepared to make them. And you've just given me a very good exposition on budgeting in Washington. Right. You know that. I know that. Right. The public is fixated on earmarks. They're fixated on discretionary spending. I know. Why not just say, Congress, get those out of there, right. and I'll sign the budget, which is absolutely necessary. You know, the, uh, uh, there may come a point fairly soon in which we have to take that approach. Uh, I mean, this is part of the challenge of democracy, is that uh, you know, I have to deal with 535 members of Congress of both parties uh, who uh, may in the abstract say we hate government waste and government spending, but when it comes to that project in their district, uh, they think it's absolutely vital. Uh, and so we are trying to change a culture here is not something that is going to happen overnight. We have seen a reduction in earmarks, but you know, let me take a very specific example. Uh, if I've got a defense bill that's presented to me and defense funding is running out in three days and I've got troops out there that I've got to make sure are equipped and we have planning for the deployment that's coming up. And somebody says to me, you know what, I'm not going to vote for this defense bill unless I get uh, this project in there. You don't mean to say anybody got, would say that to you. Well, I, I'm, I'm just saying that <laughs> those are the decisions that you make. Yeah. And, the, the, uh, and you know, I think the public rightly sort of feels like, well, why, why would you tie those two things together? Well, that's part of uh, the legislative process that is, has evolved over time. And uh, th this is why, once again, what, what you hope for is that there are moments where people are able to rise above parochial interests or party interests to make decisions that are right for the country. It's not happening enough, and frankly, because a lot of these issues are complicated and cloudy and you've got all this cable chatter that's going on all the time, uh, you know, it, it's, it's, not, uh, it's not hard for members of Congress uh, or any elected official uh, to not act responsibly. Final question. Mm -hmm. What do you have to do in the next three years to satisfy you that you've had a successful, worthwhile presidency? I've got to get, number one, the economy back on track. Uh, and uh, I think that we have been successful in averting disaster. And you know, 
you don't get a lot of credit for that because nobody knows how bad it could have been. But uh, what is absolutely true is, is that until people who are out there looking for work can find jobs, uh, they are going to discount whatever progress we've made. Uh, economic growth was strong in the third quarter. We think it will be good in the fourth quarter as well, but job growth has not caught up. So my number one priority over the next three years is to make sure that we're not only growing the economy in the aggregate, but people are getting hired and they're able to support their families and their mortgages and send their kids to college. That's uh, my job, number one. Uh, number two is making sure that Afghanistan is in a decent place so that uh, if I only serve one term, when I hand it off to the next president, they are on a trajectory in which Afghanistan is more stable, we are able to execute our strategies against al-Qaeda, and we're drawing our troops down so that we don't have a perpetual occupation in Afghanistan. Uh, I think number three uh, is making sure that we implement health care effectively as well as pass it, because this is going to be a big, difficult job. Uh, and if I can say at the end of my first term, that, you know what, we are poised to deliver on the promise of health care after the legislation has passed, uh, I think that will be important. Number four, moving us in a direction of clean energy uh, so that we are, our economy is not subject to the whims of what a bunch of oil producing countries in the Middle East want. Not only is that critical for our economy, not only is that critical for our environment, but it's critical for our foreign policy because the, the, the less reliant we are on petrodollars or, or, or the less reliant we are on, on, on uh, petroleum, okay. uh, the less we are feeding, uh, I think, a sense that somehow uh, we are inextricably tied uh, to a region that uh, is volatile and it would free us up uh, in terms of our foreign policy uh, in really important ways over the long term. So, if I can get those things done uh, over the next uh, three years, and that's a pretty big list, um, I will feel really good. And, uh, you know, if I, get, uh, if I get three out of four, uh, then I'll still feel pretty good about myself. Mr. President, thank you. Charlie, let me say thank you to you for uh, your extraordinary career, and, and uh, you've always been a class act. It means a lot to, to be able to sit here and talk to you in, in, in your last week. You're kind to say that. Thank, thank you. you. Great Appreciate point. it.